Hello, this is Pastor Matthew Woods from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana, and this is the weekly devotion for March 10th, 2024. Uh, we're quickly getting to the middle of the month. We're going very fast. Well, today's title is Say It Again. Huh? What? These were usually the words that uh, my great grandpa would use. My grandfather was very hard of hearing. My grandmother would call out, Oscar, it's time for lunch. He would then call out, huh, what? She would call a second time and a little louder, and then a little louder a third time, and then again a little louder, until finally he responded with understanding. Funny thing is, now I catch mom doing this with dad. By the way, also, great grandparents. Circle of life, I guess. My turn will come later, I'm sure. What I hope to draw your attention to today is uh, how much the scriptures repeat themselves. <clears throat> Maybe because sin makes it hard for us to hear, or like the disciples, it makes us dull in our understanding. Scriptures repeat words, phrases, and ideas, all with the intention of highlighting it and for us to gain a saving knowledge of its words. In a nutshell, the Bible repeats words, phrases, and truth uh, because they're important and they need to be. we need to pay attention to those things because we usually have to be told more than once to remember it. For example, when Moses was teaching the next generation of Israelites toward the end of the wilderness wanderings, just before they went into the promised land, he laid a heavy emphasis on obedience. Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Moses now repeats this again in Deuteronomy chapter 11, 18 through 20. In other words, keep God's law integrated into every aspect of your life. Jesus himself speaks of this too when uh, he talks about righteousness in the Sermon on the Mount integrating the law into everyday um, interactions. The message of God here is consider uh, obeying God, God's command as a form of righteousness. It's important that we live that way. It is also noted about Abraham. His obedience was credited to him as righteousness. Genesis chapter 15, 6 and James 2, 3 repeats that. Now, hundreds of scripture passages are devoted not just to obedience, but also to creator, in fact, more so. Next to God as salvation, creation is a huge theme running through scripture. Genesis 1 uh, and repeated in Genesis 2 tell us that God created everything. Many of the Psalms uh, talk about this. Psalm 8, for example, speaks of God as creator. Job chapter 38 through 40 uh, also speak, it's, it's a famous where, where God would talk uh, to Job and say, <clears throat> where were you when I laid the foundations of the world and set the boundaries of the water and so on. John chapter 1 proclaims that all things are created through the word made flesh. And Colossians 1.16 also pro proclaims that all things are created by God. It is significant that God is creator. It's trying to tell us that. Also, uh, all of this is very connected to the idea of marriage and the binary uh, nature of man and woman as they were created. Genesis 127, God created them in his own image. Male and female, he created them. And of course, we remember what uh, is said about marriage. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman for she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and the two become one flesh. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, and verses 21 through 24. Look at those. Jesus himself repeats this definition in Matthew chapter 19, 4 through 6. The repetition comes full circle on marriage in Ephesians chapter 5, 21 through 31, laying a heavy emphasis on marriage being in the very image of Jesus Jesus' relationship with his church. And so it's important. It's repeated. Consider how Jesus also repeated his mission statement to the disciples at least three times, emphasizing the cross and the resurrection. 
Jesus teaches in Luke 24, 7, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. We see it also in, in Matthew chapter 16, Matthew 17, and Matthew 20. Luke 24, 6, 24, 26, also we see it again in the on the road to Emmaus, where he says this had to happen. And then also again in Mark chapter 8, 9, and 10. This teaching is, was very hard for the disciples. It was hard for them to accept. We know it, of course, Peter trying to take Jesus aside to stop it. And in Matthew 17, 23, we hear when that, that when the disciples heard it, they were grieved. This grief would explain why it was probably repeated so many times because it was hard to absorb. Grief makes a lot of things harder to, to hear. The suffering, death, and resurrection talk was repeated so much that even Jesus' enemies caught on to it, perhaps because of Judas's betrayal. This is why they, they coerced Pilate into sealing the tomb and placing a guard. Matthew 27, 62 to 66 says it this way. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, the deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Of course, we know the most important uh, teaching of God's word in the minds of us Christians are the ones that speak mostly about the crucifixion, what follows the crucifixion of Jesus, and that's Jesus is rising from the dead, his prediction that after three days he would rise. And of course he does. All the gospels speak of Easter morning. Luke 24, 5 through 7, for example, famously shares the words of the angels at the tomb. Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified and on the third day rise? Notice even that the angel repeats what Jesus was teaching. And so resurrection becomes super, super important, obviously, the center of our Christian faith. We remember also Acts chapter 2, 24 uh, in Peter's sermon at Pentecost, God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. And then again in Acts 3.15, and you kill the author of life whom God raised from the dead. This is, <clears throat> to this we are witnesses, he says. The whole chapter of 1 Corinthians 15 speaks about a bodily resurrection. And 1 Thessalonians speaks again about this. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring him with him uh, those who have fallen asleep. He's talking about all our resurrection, going with Jesus. Many passages in the New Testament speak of Jesus' resurrection and rising to life, the rising of life of those who believe in him. It is repeated in Scripture because it is so important, so central to our salvation. So repetition is an effective tool for the Lord, uh, and we know this. I know people that can quote movies word for word because they've seen it so many times. If you've got little kids and their favorite movie is a Disney movie, you've probably seen it many times and you can quote it yourself. Same thing with music. I've seen young people quote and sing uh, lyrics from songs because they've heard it so many times in the radio. Most of us learn things like times tables because we repeat that and solve problems over and over again. Repetition is a very effective teaching tool especially when it is learned and then put into practice. I can change my brakes, for example, in my car less than an hour because of, because of repetition. I've done it so many times. Maybe this is why we see repetition commanded in things like the Passover practice, to remember that God had brought the people out of Israel, uh, brought the people Israel out of Egypt. Perhaps then it stands to reason that it is good to celebrate Good Friday and Easter Sunday each year. It's important to have such things as a church year that highlights the activity of God that is repetitious, yes, but also a teaching tool. Uh, 
Israelites, uh, Israelites, when they passed for, um, came from the Passover every year, they would learn about that and continually what God does for his people. Jesus wants us to remember and to celebrate what he has given to us through him. He doesn't want us to forget it. He doesn't want us just to be, he doesn't want it just to be repeated to us, but for us to repeat it to those behind us, our children. Perhaps a fitting way then to end to, to this discussion about repetition is to give you one more form of repetition, which emphasizes a superlative. Isaiah chapter 26, three through four gives us two of those. It says, you will keep in perfect peace, literally it means, translated as peace, peace, those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, the Lord himself, there it is again, is the rock eternal. May Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, then give us all peace, peace, perfect peace. May we have ears to hear the repeated daily grace, forgiveness, and promise given to us in God's word. And may we gratefully ask the Lord to say it again and again until we understand. May God bless us to have ears to hear in this way and a humble heart to receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, thank you again for being with me today. I pray your blessings upon this week, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.